Hey everyone, thank you for sticking around for our presentation. We're super excited to talk to you guys about vaping marketing and advertising tactics. There's really interesting facts in our presentation. My name is Kayla and I'm here with Ella and we're super excited to get started. But before we get started, we're gonna tell you guys a little bit about ourselves. So my name is Kayla Madrid. I'm a first year TA and I'm from El Paso, Texas. Woo, 915. So in this slide, you can see me outside just enjoying the fresh air, you know, who doesn't love being outside? And a picture of my two dogs, you know, I love dogs, they're my favorite animals ever. And, you know, in the middle of the slide, you see a picture of all the TAs. The TAs are super important to me, they really inspire me to work harder and just put out these awesome presentations for you guys. So now that you know a little bit about me, we're going to hand it over to Ella. Thank you, Kayla. Like she said earlier, my name is Ella Troop. I'm also a first year teen ambassador and I'm going to be a sophomore at Sinton High School in Sinton, Texas. Now my pictures that I have here on the screen, one is just a selfie and the other one is a picture of me and my sister. She is my best friend in the whole world and I would do everything with her if I could. And the last two are pictures of two teams that I am involved in here in Sinton. The first is called Challenge, which is a TV trivia game show for high school students. And the other one is Academic Decathlon, which is where they quiz you on 10 different subjects. And of course, my social media handles are here on the screen. If you would like to, you can follow my Instagram and add me on Snapchat. I will follow back. And if you aren't already, please follow at TXAWhat on all of our social medias. We're on pretty much every platform and we just recently made a TikTok, which is super fun because you get to see lots of videos that the teen ambassadors, consultants, and even staff are in. So now that you guys know all of our socials, be sure to go follow them, leave a like, retweet, share TikTok, and now we're going to get into the info of the presentation. In this picture, you can see a man holding traditional cigarettes in one hand and an e-cigarette in another. From the outside, it might seem kind of strange that they have any similarities at all since they just look so different, but they have way too many similarities and their effects are the exact same. They both cause really dangerous health effects like making it harder to breathe or even increasing the risk of certain cancers like lung cancer. On this next slide, you can see that how many adults and teenagers in Texas in the year 2017 used e-cigarettes. In 2017, 4.7% of adults in Texas used e-cigarettes and 10.3% of high school students used e-cigarettes at least on one day in the last 30 days. Big Tobacco saw the decline of teens using traditional products and they decided it would be best to hook them on something new. They've always been targeting the teens with these e-cigarettes. Juul and e-cigarette companies, they designed their products to be slick and portable, which is easy for a teenager to hide, to say if they're going to go take a hit in the bathroom or just hide it from teachers or pass it off to their parents as a USB. This shows why e-cigarettes are so popular amongst high schoolers compared to adults. And if you guys thought those numbers were shocking, take a look at some of these more recent statistics. In Texas, the percent of teenagers using e-cigarettes went up from 10.3% to 18.9% in just one year. This survey in 2018 also found that 6% of middle schoolers in Texas were using e-cigarettes. These are not good numbers at all. Middle schoolers and high schoolers were the future and we can't afford to be hooked on big tobacco and they're just disgusting tricks. So the youth are inhaling these cancer-causing chemicals and heavy, heavy metals like nickel, tin, and lead. Big tobacco and e-cigarette companies try their best to hook the youth on these devices. And one way they're trying to do that is through our streaming services. So now we're going to watch a video about how they're trying to hook the youth through streaming services like Netflix. I love it so very much. That sucks. I need a 
cigarette. Gotta get one of those. Food tastes even better. Remind her not to smoke yeah, it. Don't, don't smoke it, darling. You just have to hold it. Really don't mind if you blow me away. I'm trying to keep cool, but the way we're going, you're making me melt in your hot, hot flames. Who got a cigarette, man? Anyone got a cigarette at the bar? Sometimes it's really hard to notice these Easter eggs at first, but they're really prominent in today's media. I bet we've all watched some show on Netflix or Hulu or whichever streaming service that you use that has smoking in it. I know that I watch Stranger Things and their parents or the cop are always just smoking. I mean, it's not really necessary, is it? Some may argue that it's historically accurate, but do we really need to see from a show marketed towards teenagers, we don't need to see adults smoking cigarettes every scene, right? They can't advertise through commercials anymore, so Big Tobacco took the next step and decided to weave their way right into the content that we watch. Pretty scary, right? Just like Kayla said, that is super scary. But what's even scarier is that tobacco usage is even in animated PG-rated shows like The Simpsons, meaning young children and teens are the target audience. What message is being sent in scenes like these, where Homer is being offered a hit off of a flavored vape pen, and even baby Maggie is seen blowing smoke rings? Now this right here is something that you might have in your room right now. If you're like me, your laundry hamper is probably full of dirty laundry, and you can tell that this one is overflowing. And while the headquarters of this extremely popular e-cigarette brand may appear sparkling clean, they actually hold even more dirty laundry than the hamper in the last slide. Although we aren't going to do your laundry for you, we will air out some of Jules' dirty laundry. So. Here's something pulled straight out of the hamper of Big Tobacco. In this picture, you see James Monsies, co-founder of Jewel Labs, defending his company's actions in a congressional hearing. They offered $10,000 to schools for the right to talk to students in their classrooms after school or during school. They offered $10,000 just so that they could try and influence these young teenagers. These were ninth graders. And on one attempt, they succeeded. They, some representatives from Jewel were able to go into a ninth grade classroom without any teachers as it was supposed to be a quote unquote safe space for the students. The Jewel executive or the associate was telling these teenagers that Jewel was quote unquote totally safe and it was safer than a traditional cigarette, that it was better than an e-cigarette, than a traditional cigarette, excuse me. And later, they backtracked on what they said and said that they never wanted the youth to use e-cigarettes and that they were never trying to target them. But their words don't exactly match up with their action, and the way they were trying to make money talk does not show what their words were trying to say. They also cover up by saying that they really never wanted the youth to use their products, and again, that they took missteps in trying to keep their product away from the youth. It sounds like they're really trying to deceive us here, guys, uh, but we really should not fall for it. Talking about deception, if there's one thing that Big Tobacco loves more than selling their products, it's deceiving people into buying their products. Pretty much ever since its creation, Big Tobacco has been targeting minority groups and convincing them to get addicted to their products. And now e-cigarette companies are doing the same. If you take a look at these ads, you can see that they are painfully similar. The only difference is one is from the 80s for Virginia Slims and one is for a much more recent e-cigarette. Both women are portrayed as slim and dainty to match the slim and dainty products they hold in their hands. Even the blue dress is the same. This is proof not only that e-cigarette companies copy old marketing strategies, but that women have always been targeted. 
This example is a little less obvious than the first, but when Big Tobacco tries to market towards African Americans, they use menthols. Newports were and still are a very popular brand of menthol cigarettes. Although it's not super evident in the ad for Juul, they use a mint colored background to imply that African Americans should use menthol Juul pods. Although it's not clear why they chose this type of product for this specific community, we know that their marketing worked. 90% of youth African American smokers smoke menthols, unfortunately. And although this one is not an ad, it is clear who this company is trying to market to just by looking at the package. If you haven't already guessed, these cigarettes are marketed towards Native Americans. I also don't have an ad on this one for e-cigarettes, but Juul did try pitching their product to at least eight different American Indian tribes. Although smoking rates have declined in recent years, American Indian and Alaska Native rates have remained significantly higher than the rest. For this next slide, I have an ad for smokeless tobacco marketed towards the LGBT community. You can see the rainbow in the corner, the containers arranged in the order of the rainbow, as well as the word pride, implying that if you are LGBTQ+, you should use this product. I also have a little infographic about the disproportionate tobacco impact on this community. Unfortunately, 20.6% of lesbian, gay, and bisexual adults and 35.5% of transgender adults smoke, while that number is only 14.9% for straight adults, which is still very high, but you can see how disproportionate that number and percentages are. Project SCUM was a marketing strategy designed by RJ Reynolds in 1995 to sell products to gay and homeless people in San Francisco. Now, let's have a quick recap. We talked about how similar traditional cigarettes and e-cigarettes really are. We watched a video on tobacco use portrayed in the content we watch and learned that it's even in PG-rated shows like The Simpsons. We aired out some of Jules' dirty laundry, and lastly, we discussed how Big Tobacco has always marketed their products towards minority groups like women, African Americans, Native Americans, and even the LGBTQ plus community. And with that, our presentation is concluded. We would like to thank you all so, so much for coming. We hope you enjoyed it. And now we have a few minutes left for questions. Thank you.